He, you're not gonna, he's not going to let you. <laughs> Very uh, pleased to welcome everyone today for this uh, study day. It's going to be recorded, if I get my phone in order, as a lot of the study days we've had over the years, and I keep promising you that there's going to be a, a website called whatgoodnews.org, which there was formerly, there will be a new one, which will be much easier to use. Uh, why is it everybody revamps websites? So it's always been revamped. Anyway, this one really is being revamped, and one of the things on it in the next few weeks will be uh, Dr. Sean Ryan's talk here today. Um, what else do I have to say? I'll say some more, some more things later. You will have noticed, because you're the kind of people who first of all go to church, and secondly listen to the reading. So you will have noticed this Easter time, that the second reading has, reading has been taken from the book called The Apocalypse. A reading from the book of The Apocalypse. Of course, the liturgy chooses the best bit. And there are quite a few bits in the Apocalypse that perhaps one wouldn't call best. Though, of course, we could spend a whole day defining what best scripture means. So I think it's very appropriate, because tomorrow we'll have our last Sunday of Easter, apart from Pentecost, so we'll have the Apocalypse again tomorrow, which I'm sure you will hear with new ears and see with new eyes. So I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Sean Ryan. He's at Roehampton, as you know, and uh, one of our uh, up-and-coming Catholic scholars uh, in the church in this country, of, of, of which, of whom we need lots more, because some of us are getting old. <laughs> right? right, okay, so I'm going to start recording, and so it's going to be a bit formal now when I get started. Drawing nearer to the presence of God with the Apocalypse. Study day given by Dr. Sean Michael Ryan at the Church of Christ the Eternal High Priest in Gidea Park. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you all very much indeed for coming. Uh, wonderful to see such a large number of people here uh, for the study. And thank you again, uh, Father Adrian, uh, for inviting me. Uh, so what we'll be looking at today uh, will be the book of Revelation, or the Apocalypse. And the plan of the session is, is something like this. Uh, we'll have two parts. We'll have a morning session uh, between now and about half past twelve. Uh, and within that, we'll have a sort of five minute break um, part way through the morning session as well, just to lie down a little bit <laughs> and take in what you've heard so far. Uh, just have a bit of a chat with your friend and uh, do all various things. Uh, and in the afternoon session, again, we'll come back after lunch at half past one, um, and we'll look in particular at Revelation chapters four and five in the, in the second half. Uh, and I, I've heard there may be some questions as well, so you may have hard questions that you've written down to ask me, so I'll try and answer those. Uh, but what we'll be doing in the morning session, I thought would be most helpful, is just a kind of an introduction to the apocalypse. What is the book of Revelation? How do you approach a text like that? Um, so I'll try and do that in the morning. And then we'll have a little break and then come back after lunch and look at some of the material in chapters four and five. Uh, so it's a very long and rich and complex book, 22 chapters long. Uh, so we can't look at the whole thing, but we'll get a, a kind of a sense of the whole in the morning and then focus on particular aspects in the afternoon. Uh, so I hope that's OK. That's the plan. Um, and just to say, I've got, I've got a PowerPoint for the morning and one also for the afternoon. Uh, and I'll put my email address up at the end, so if people would like 
uh, a copy of them, I'm very happy to send them through to you um, if people want to, uh, those afterwards, uh, as well as the recording. And this is then the plug, so it's not for me, so I don't feel too bad, uh, this is not one of my books. Um, but uh, this is by Dr Ian Boxall, uh, I don't know if uh, you've met with him before, again a very, very eminent uh, Catholic scholar, he's now at the uh, Catholic University of America in Washington. Uh, so in the Take and Read series that Father Adrian edits, uh, he's written a book kind of introducing the apocalypse, and there's copies of that on sale over, over there on the table. Um, so in terms of following up, if, you're, if this kind of interests you, kind of whets your appetite for the apocalypse, that'd be an excellent book to kind of follow up with. Uh, and copies are available, I think it's eight pounds, to uh, a bargain uh, of eight pounds to, to do. Um, so this is what we'll be looking at in the, the first part, in the morning part of the session. Um, so first of all, what sort of text is, how, how do we understand this text, the book of Revelation? What is it? How do we read something like this? Um, we need to get a little bit of a sense of the historical context. Uh, when was this text written? Who was it written to? Uh, like any text, we get a sense of the context of it. We'll talk a little bit about the structure of it, um, particularly this idea of sevens. So if you've read this text before, this series of sevens that keep happening within. So we'll touch on that, this kind of structure or movement of thought as you read it this kind of cycles of sevens that keep happening. Uh, and then at the end, um, what is the overall theological message of this book? Uh, so I'm pretending to give you the answer to everything uh, in the first part of the session, um, so you can see if you agree or, or disagree with that. Uh, but the, so the morning part is really just to give you an introduction, to get you kind of going, uh, getting a little bit of a sense of the book. Um, so is that okay? Are people happy enough with that? Excellent. Um, and, I said, and particularly in the, in the second half, we'll have time for, for questions. You can ask one of those kind of burning questions, all the things you were wanting to know about the apocalypse. And uh, I don't know if I'll know the answer, but I, I'll make up an answer if I don't. Um, so this is this idea of genre. What sort of text is it? Um, and you get this idea of, in order to read any type of text, knowing what it is will change how you read it. Is something a letter? Is it a love letter? Is it a business letter? Uh, it will change how you read it if you know what the text is like. Uh, it's this idea of genre. Um, and as often you'll see, if you look at introductory studies on the book of Revelation, three particular types of genre often come up. It, it's a bit like three different types of text. Uh, one of them is prophecy, another is letter, and the third one is apocalypse. So we'll talk a little bit about each of those. So it's a little bit like a prophecy, a little bit like a letter, a little bit like a, an apocalypse. So we'll just say a little bit about what those things are and how that might help us understand them. And we'll begin with prophecy. Um, so the apocalypse itself describes itself as a prophecy on a number of times. You can see those references there that you might want to follow up. So in order to understand this text, one of the things that will help you the most is if you know some of the prophetic texts from the Old Testament. Because again and again and again, what will happen in the book of Revelation is it picks up imagery and language that's familiar from the Old Testament and kind of sees it again, re-envisions it again. Uh, so the more you know some of those Old Testament prophets, the more familiar some of this imagery will be. And so what would have happened back in the first century when this text was written, the audience who were listening to it knew the scriptures really well. They knew the prophetic texts. And so when they saw or heard these images again, they were getting connections back to scripture they'd already heard before. Um, so this idea of the book of Revelation being a prophecy, it's very similar, uh, not identical, but very, very similar to a number of the prophetic texts, particularly Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Zechariah. So the more you know those texts, when you read Revelation, you go, ah, oh, wow, it's picking up this imagery again. It's familiar. Um, it's like, um, yeah, it's just, it's kind of picking up familiar imagery you've seen before, but showing it in a new way. There's something new happening. They're familiar images, but they've changed now. Um, so this idea of the book of Revelation as a, as a prophecy. Um, so if you were living in the first century and heard this text being read aloud, because that's what would have happened at the time, you wouldn't have sat down yourself to read it. Most likely you'd have heard it read aloud in a worship kind of context. Um, if you knew the prophetic text, it would remind you of those, uh, particularly Ezekiel, Daniel, Isaiah, Zechariah. And there's lots and lots of studies, scholarly studies, of the way in which the Revelation picks up and reinterprets, reimagines those types of images. 
Um, so one thing it, it does straight away is encourages you to read the Old Testament. Because the more you read the Old Testament, the more you'll understand this book. Uh, and if you don't, it's much harder. It's much harder to work out what on earth is going on in this text if you don't know some of those texts already. Um, so already it's giving you homework and you haven't even begun. <laughs> so to, do, to read some of the prophetic texts uh, from scripture. Um, and then the other crucial thing is, although it's picking up imagery that's familiar from Zechariah and uh, Daniel and Ezekiel and all these texts, it's kind of combining them. So all of those different prophets had a number of these images, a number of these visions uh, which they saw, and, and the book of Revelation is almost like the box set combined version of all of them uh, in one. Um, it's drawing together all those images you're familiar with from scripture and bringing it together in one kind of definitive text. Uh, the Apocalypse presents itself as the definitive, culminating vision of all previous scriptural prophecies. All the visions and oracles that previous prophets have been privileged to see and hear in a partial and piecemeal way are now fully disclosed in one definitive and all-encompassing visionary narrative. So familiar images which you'll have seen or heard from other prophetic texts are now going to all be kind of combined. Um, do you know the, some of the most popular things now in the cinema are these kind of, what they call the Avengers uh, type of series. So the, the book of Revelation is like the Avengers, where you get all the Avengers in the one film. Uh, so it's all the things you were already familiar with, uh, but now combined into one, uh, into one text. Uh, so familiar images, such as Isaiah's New Jerusalem, Ezekiel's eschatological temple, this kind of end time temple, Daniel's beast from the sea and the son of man, or Zechariah's horseman, are now revealed fully and definitively in one single and combined, all-encompassing prophetic vision. Uh, so images you have seen before in isolated texts in Isaiah or Zechariah or Daniel now all come together in one kind of definitive super text, uh, this kind of supervision of everything all combined. Um, oh, sorry, I hadn't put that screen up, did you see? Um, so that was some of the points we mentioned there. So some of the images you may have recalled and that you'll hear again or see again in a new way in the book of Revelation. Things like the, the prophet Zechariah, uh, the idea of the, the horses, uh, these horses in the abyss ridden uh, by these kind of angelic figures, different coloured horses. So something you'll be familiar with from Zechariah is going to come back again in a new way in <coughs> Revelation. Uh, similarly, Daniel chapter 7. This image of these monsters arising out of the abyss and the Son of Man come into the heavenly realm. Um, again, you'll see something like that again in a new way in the book of Revelation. Or Daniel chapter 10, this kind of vision of this angel figure uh, kind of gleaming like bronze. Uh, again, you'll see something like that again in the book of Revelation. Uh, so why is it in Revelation you've got this kind of definitive, combined, kind of super Avengers version uh, of those scriptural texts. Uh, what makes the book of Revelation different? Why is this prophecy different from the other ones that have come before? Um, this idea of combining all these different images together. And the crucial thing is, who's the person who's revealing it? On what basis does the apocalypse present itself as such a definitive prophetic vision? It's because the prophetic vision is revealed by the risen Christ, the Son of God. That's the reason. Um, do you see, if you look at your uh, Bibles, if you have them with you, Revelation uh, chapter 1, verse 1, although we know the title of the book as the Revelation of John, that's not quite what it says at the beginning. The Revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus, even to all that he saw. So ultimately, it's the Revelation of Jesus Christ. And that's why it's a definitive vision. It's because the Son of God reveals the whole picture, not just little pieces. Um, so it's this idea of drawing together all those images that you've seen in previous prophetic scripture, kind of little bits that have been revealed to different prophets, you now get the kind of culminating vision of it all, and it's because it's the revelation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's why it's this definitive vision. That's what sets it apart from the ones that have gone before. It's the prophet who's revealing it. Jesus is more than a prophet. So that's why it's more than just a prophecy like the other uh, prophetic texts. So it's like a prophecy, but it's also not like other prophecies. Because he's not just another prophet. He's not just another Jeremiah or Ezekiel. He's more than that. Um, so they're similar but different to things you've heard before. Um, 
So that's that's one. I've frightened you all. You've gone a bit quiet now. Uh, but this idea of um, this is why it's similar. It's familiar in many ways to things you've seen before, but it's new and fresh, and it's got something extraordinary about it. It's drawing all these things together. Um, you can see where it's ended up in the canon, the New Testament canon, the final book drawing all the kind of threads of scripture together, uh, the last book of the Bible. I'll say just very briefly mention this. I won't go into this in much detail. Uh, but the idea of it being a letter, at the beginning and the end, you get this kind of letter opening and closing. I'm not going to say much uh, about that, other than letters like Paul's letters to various communities would have been read out in a worship context. So again, it's got an opening and closing, like a letter, because uh, those sorts of things would be read out in a worship uh, context. Uh, the other type of text, uh, usually it's referred to as an apocalypse. Um, this is the book of Revelation as an apocalypse. And that's often a term used by scholars to refer to particular late types of prophetic writing. Some of them that are in the Bible, like the book of Daniel, others that you maybe have heard of but won't know very much, they didn't end up in the canons of scripture. Uh, one Enoch, four Ezra, and, um, and two Baruch. Four Ezra's in the, uh, the Latin translation, but most of those didn't end up in it. So these kind of late uh, prophetic texts um, that are similar to the book of Revelation in another way. Um, so again, they're types of prophecy, but kind of a late type of Hellenistic or Roman era uh, type of prophecy. Uh, so what is an apocalypse? Um, and if you want to look clever, uh, what you do is you quote this definition uh, from John Collins uh, back in 1979. Uh, if you look at most textbooks and they say, what is an apocalypse? They'll quote this definition. Uh, so I'll read it out and then I'll explain, because uh, it won't necessarily be blindingly obvious just to read it. Uh, an apocalypse is a genre of revelatory literature with a narrative framework in which a revelation is mediated by an otherworldly being to a human recipient, disclosing a transcendent reality which is both temporal insofar as it envisages eschatological salvation and spatial insofar as it involves another supernatural world. And you're thinking, oh my god, what does that mean? Um, uh, but luckily I've done a little drawing, um, like a five-year-old would do, to try and explain it to you. Uh, not that treating these five-year-olds, but just my drawings look like five-year-olds' drawings. Um, ultimately, what are apocalypses about? Uh, how are they slightly different to other prophecies? Is they're about the revelation, the disclosure of heavenly mysteries. That's the whole point of what's happening in an apocalypse. So you can see there my rather brilliant five-year-old's drawing. Uh, the heavenly mysteries are in a kind of box in heaven. Um, so this idea of what does an apocalypse do? It discloses heavenly secrets, heavenly mysteries. And how are you going to get access to those heavenly